along. Good morning, Clinton Brett here from Diesel Help Australia. I'm actually uh, out in uh, Kipper Ring at the moment, which is near Redcliffe. Um, you see here in the background, I'll actually spin the camera around. We're actually uh, at one of our new members, uh, which is uh, Brian Swain Automotive. Brian has uh, been attending quite a few of our training courses over the last couple of years. I think I saw Brian at our one of our first courses many years ago at Morris Donovan's workshop uh, around about four years ago, three or four years ago. And uh, he's got quite a collection here, some nice old classics there. And of course, my old favourite classic in the corner there, uh, which is a beautiful RS Escort. But what we're here today is actually to... Um, I dropped in here, he attended one of our Common Rail, uh, Common Diesel Faults courses last night at uh, Cool Drive Automotive and Eagle Farm. Uh, they've been great to host a number of our courses. We did it along with uh, a collaboration with uh, TAT's Brendan Sorensen. And um, so I'm actually staying out this way from, um, while I'm here doing these courses. And the vehicle I'm showing you here is the great old uh, Nissan Patrol ZD30 with a Common Rail Diesel 3 litre. A very popular um, diagnostics of ours. We average around about three um, possibly even more some months of this um, particular problem. Now I won't go into full detail about how to actually do the diagnostics but one thing I really want to make it clear here everyone if you're going to do common rail diesel, if you're going to touch diesel please listen to the professionals. That's just not myself, there's a quite a few of us that know this procedure um, is required and, it's, and it should be done first the right time so it doesn't come back again and bite the customer. Um, what I'm talking about is the actual um, a particular fault code that occurs which is related to this component here the rail um, I'll just point it out here. So this is the uh, the main rail distributes fuel from the pump to all the injectors Now um, we've got the banjo bolt off here and we're actually um, Brian's going to be carrying out a test shortly when it gets warm um, To show how that leaks out there and uh, we connect up a number of uh, pipes to do that now, the whole point I am uh, um, decided to film this live today is because I've absolutely had a gutful of, um, of um, people out there replacing just this valve. Um, I know a lot of people have had success with them, but how long, how long has it been successful, you won't know. Um, some people have said, oh, it comes back and I've never had a problem with it, but that doesn't matter because um, I can tell you now, we've had far a much higher percentage where people have just replaced that valve only um, and it hasn't fixed the problem or it's created other problems on the vehicle. So there's no gasket in there um, Have a look at the area. It's always quite dirty around there. It's very easy to get to contaminates in there um, You know some of the diagnostics they're, they're charging for fifty five hundred dollars just to do that Fitting and the whole rail itself is about six hundred bucks and you can diagnose it in probably less than an hour You know well, we've been able to diagnose them in 15 minutes maximum that includes plumbing it all up so Please guys, please do it properly. If you're going to touch diesel, please do it how we would prefer you to do it properly the first time. Okay, um, look after your customers, look after the industry. That's the whole point I'm getting here, is that our industry is um, it, our industry is copying some um, a lot of grief from um, where people have not done the job properly the first time. And of course, you may not actually hear about it. You may not actually. You think oh, it's been running fine, but what's actually happened with this job here is it's been to another workshop. And uh, the guy's just bought the car second hand, you know, he may not have a load of money, um, but that it's not the point, it's not whether they've got money or not, you need to do the job properly. If they haven't got money to spend on it, don't do the job at all. You're better off um, setting them straight the first time, okay? So please uh, take my advice on board. I'm talking seriously here because I love my diesels, I love, um, I love the industry, I love the automotive industry. Um, we're, we're going in leaps and bounds, great to hear um, today. Uh, or last night they officially announced it's mandatory law that um, the OEMs are, have um, must share the information to mechanics so we're winning that way but we've got to keep up the good spirit we've got to keep everyone um, doing the right thing by the customer and by the industry so I uh, trust you all have a great day um, it's great to um, be able to drop in and see some members while we're out um, in Brisbane so all the best I'll talk to you soon bye